Hello and welcome back to the Air Armoury, I'm JRH and today I'm looking at the Remington Express Air Rifle. Most people will be aware of, or at least have heard of, Remington, or the Remington Arms Company as they're officially known. Now they are one of the biggest and oldest firearms manufacturers in the US, having been founded in 1816 by Eli Follett Remington in Ilion, New York, and they are still around today operating from a number of sites across the eastern United States. Now they've got a long history of firearms manufacture, making both military and sporting uh, rifles, shotguns and pistols, with a number of notable models, including the rolling block rifle and the model 870 shotgun. And they started making air guns in, I believe, the early 2000s. Now I say making, these guns weren't actually made by Remington, the name was just used under licence by Crossman. Remington air guns only relatively recently made it onto the UK market, I think just in the last few years. And this recent range of guns, including the Express, as well as guns like the Tyrant and the Thunderjet, are not actually made by Crossman. Uh, that being said, their status is still slightly dubious as these guns are made in China rather than one of Remington's US manufacturing facilities. Uh, but before you reel away in horror at the thought of another stereotypical Chinese air gun, um, the only way you'd know this gun was made in China is because it says so on the box. It's actually a very good quality gun, which Remington not afraid to put their name to. Uh, there's no mention of made under license or anything like that. Uh, Remington want you to know that this is their gun. This specific model, the Express, was introduced in 2014 and is still in production and is imported and distributed in the UK by SMK or Sports Marketing to give them their full name. Now it's advertised as being suitable for vermin control and all-round target shooting but I'm pretty confident that paired with a good quality scope it would be suitable for um, hunting small quarry such as rabbits at reasonable distances. Now on the box it says it is inspired by America's favourite rifle and that is because the Express is based, at least on, uh, in terms of looks, on the Remington Model 700 bolt action rifle. And the Express definitely shares some characteristics of the Model 700 such as the shape of the stock and the pattern of the checkering. The Express was originally only available in one configuration, so you didn't get any options with regard to barrel length, uh, stock or calibre, but it is now available in a fair few configurations, so I'll point those out as we go through the video. And the Express, as with most of Remington's air guns on the market at the moment, actually comes as a combo package, so as well as the rifle you also get a scope and mounts. Now this video is going to be primarily a review on the rifle but I will also include a brief review of the scope as well. So let's take a closer look at the Remington Express air rifle. This isn't an unboxing video but as you've already seen I still have the original box so I thought I may as well get it out for the video. So in the box as well as the rifle, you then have that Remington scope and mounts and the instruction manual. The Remington Express is a brake barrel spring piston rifle and with the barrel open you can see it actually uses a spring tensioned ball bearing to lock the barrel in place rather than the conventional spring loaded plunger and a nice little attention to detail, I don't know how well you can see there but the breech is actually uh, countersunk slightly to assist with loading and seating the pellet to prevent the skirt getting damaged or deformed when the barrel closes. So the rifle is 45 and a half inches or 115.8 centimeters long so it's quite a long gun and it weighs 8.3 pounds or 3.76 kilograms scoped or seven and three quarter pounds or 3.38 kilograms unscoped so as well as being a long gun it's also quite a heavy gun. It has an 18.7 inch or 47.5 centimetre long rifle barrel 
Uh, originally this was the only barrel length available but you can now get the Express Compact which is essentially the same gun but a carbine version. Uh, the stock might also be slightly shorter on that gun as well but I'm not totally sure. The barrel as well as all of the other metal parts is finished with a nice quality bluing. Now, in terms of calibre this particular example is in 177. Now originally it was only available in 177 but you can now get all versions of the Express in both 177 and 22. So it has a beach sport style stock which as I said earlier is similar in looks to the uh, Remington 700 bolt action rifle and it has a slightly raised cheek piece but only on the top uh, not on the side so that makes it an ambidextrous stock. The forend is nicely rounded at the front and uh, it comes far enough forward that it actually completely covers the cocking lever um, which I think is actually quite a nice feature on brake barrels and definitely adds to the looks of it. It has nicely shaped checkering on the grip and the forend and unlike on some guns that checkering is not just for show it really does add grip and the fact that it's unfinished provides a nice contrast and a nice gloss finish on the rest of the stock and as I said earlier it is the same style checkering as on the Remington 700. It then has the Remington R logo cut into the bottom of the stock uh, which is a nice touch. Overall I'd say that it is a very nice stock both in terms of features and finish. Uh, since the, the Express was originally released in 2014 at Remington do now also offer a version with a synthetic stock instead of the traditional wood stock. In terms of hardware it has a nice quality rubber butt stock with Remington moulded into it and a plastic trigger guard. Now although it is plastic it does feel quite sturdy and it has a hole cut in it for you to adjust the trigger which is what we're going to have a look at now and to help with that I'm first going to remove the stock. You can see the Express has a cast metal trigger unit which houses a metal trigger blade which has some nice grooves or serrations cut into the front of it to add grip. Now the trigger is two stage and is adjustable for pull weight using this screw at the front which is the one accessed via the hole in the trigger guard and for sear engagement using this screw behind the trigger blade. The trigger is quite nice. Uh, it breaks crisply without too much creep and whilst it does have the facility to make adjustments it's actually pretty good straight out of the box. The Express has an automatic safety on the back here so that automatically engages when the gun is cocked. You can see it now protruding on the left hand side. So to disengage it you push it all the way over from the left to the right as indicated by the S and F for safe and fire on the back of the gun. So when the gun is uh, ready to fire, the red shows on the right hand side. Now a nice feature of this safety is that it is resettable using this lever on the left hand side. So if I bring that back, it then re-engages that safety. And that is also uh, acts as a cocking indicator as you can only pull that lever back when the gun is cocked. I've just fired the gun off camera and you can see that because it's no longer cocked you can no longer use that lever. Now it is a good safety but it has a couple of slight drawbacks. Now depending on uh, if you've got a scope mounted and whereabouts it is mounted on the rail the scope can actually block and prevent you from being able to lift that lever up to reset the safety and although it looks like it's going to be quite well placed for your thumb to push off when you're holding the gun because the gun is uh, quite big in the hand you can actually sometimes have to move your hand a bit to actually get on that safety to disengage it. In terms of sights the rear sight is a large plastic sight unit it is removable but it's never got in the way of any of the scopes I've hand mounted so there's no real need to. So it's a fibre optic sight with these two green fibre optic bars and it is adjustable for both windage and elevation using the click wheels on the top and the side. The front sight is a red fibre optic bar mounted on top of a ramp. Uh, the whole front sight is a large moulded plastic piece fitted over the end of the barrel and the ramp is actually nicely 
uh, serrated so that, or grooved to avoid glare. But I do find that those grooves do sometimes tend to hurt my fingers a bit if I'm um, cocking the gun repeatedly and holding my hand uh, out that far to get as much leverage on the barrel as I can. I believe the front sight is just press fit onto the end of the barrel, so I think you could probably remove it, uh, certainly by uh, removing or loosening that grub screw. Uh, although I'm not sure how great the gun would look without it, I haven't tried it. Now the reason you might want to remove it is because certainly with the scope that comes with the gun, uh, you can actually clearly see the front sight through the scope. Although the slight benefit of that is that um, it's a non uh, parallax adjustable scope that comes with the gun, so you can at least use it to line up the crosshairs. Now overall the sights are okay but not great. Uh, the fibre optics pick up light really well and the sight picture is acceptable. Uh, they're definitely usable but they look and feel a bit cheap and plasticky and aren't up to the same quality as the rest of the gun. Uh, that being said I'd much rather have them um, than none at all as on the XP versions. If you want to mount a scope it has a standard 11mm dovetail rail and as I've already said numerous times the Express does come as a package with a scope and mounts and the scope you get with it is this one. So it's Remington or at least Remington branded scope. Uh, it's 4x32 so the magnification is set at four times and it has a 32mm objective lens which is this larger one at the front um, and as you can see hopefully it has just a relatively standard reticle. Now obviously the focus is adjustable uh, but it doesn't have an adjustable objective lens in order to correct parallax error and for a full explanation on what that means uh, watch my video on the Nikko Sterling Mount Master Scope uh, I'll put a link to that in the video uh, that video in the description below in case you're interested. So the scope looks and feels uh, well enough made with nice metal covers which cover the coin or screwdriver adjustable turrets for windage and elevation. Now having an optic included with the gun means that you can scope up straight out of the box which is fantastic if you just want a complete inexpensive setup but whilst the scope uh, isn't bad it is a bit of a basic scope and it's the kind you'd expect to find in a combo package. Uh, so although the scope might be in the same price range as the gun it's not of the same quality. Uh, as you'll see in a couple of minutes with this scope mounted the rifle is um, an accurate enough gun but it does hold it back from realising the full potential of the Express. It does also come with mounts although they're not the worst I've ever seen they are very basic with just one screw on each side for attaching to the gun and one on either side at the top for attaching the scope uh, into the mounts whereas on most good quality mounts you would have two screws for each. Uh, lastly it does come with lens covers uh, they're nothing fancy but they do the job just fine. Looking now at the markings on the gun, you've already seen the R on the bottom, Remington in the butt pad and the S and F on the safety. Now on the right hand side of the gun we've got Remington Express on the side of the main cylinder and then Remington on the uh, back of the barrel block. And then turning over on the left hand side we have Express 177 calibre 4.5 millimeter pellet air rifle then the serial number Remington Arms Company and then moving further down the gun we have Express 177 calibre 4.5 millimeter pellet air rifle Remington Arms Company and then a big warning logo before using read owner's manual available free from remington.com misuse or careless use may cause serious injury particularly to the eyes or death now I'm not a massive fan of those kind of uh, markings, safety markings on the guns. For me personally I do detract from the gun very slightly but I guess I can just about understand in this day and age why they have them. Uh, all of the markings are just very lightly in the metalwork, um, kind of within the bluing, they're not actually stamped into the metal itself. I'm now going to test the accuracy of the rifle. Now normally I just do a test with open sights but seeing as the rifle comes in a combo I'll test the accuracy as well with the supplied scope and I'll also test it with a better quality scope uh, just to see what the rifle is capable of. And for all three tests I'm going to be shooting these 10.65 uh, grain H&N Sport Barracuda match pellets at a distance of around 12 metres and I'm going to start with open sights.
here I have my target. Now the accuracy isn't too bad for open sights. Uh, all 10 pellets are within this red three point ring uh, with the overall grouping being five centimeters or two inches. Um, whilst seven of the pellets are either in or touching the inner five point ring, uh, the pellets are still spread within the group. Uh, it's not just one stray causing the size of that group. So let's see if we can improve that using the Remington, uh, Remington scope that came with the gun. Here we have that target. Now first of all it's clear I need to re-zero it. Uh, I thought it was relatively okay uh, before I took it off last time um, but what I'm really looking for here is the size of the grouping. So the overall grouping has shrunk to 3.5 centimeters or about 1.4 inches but if you remove this one outlier at the bottom uh, the other nine pellets are in a tighter 3 centimeter or 1.2 inch group. So that accuracy is definitely better than with the open sights, but a better scope will improve that still. So I'm now going to mount this Nico Sterling 3 to 9 by 40 mount master scope, um, and that is parallax adjustable, which should help as well. Here I have my final target. Now with a better scope I have a sub 3 centimeter grouping with 9 of the pellets in or at least partially in the inner blue circle. Uh, it's by far the tightest grouping so far and if you take out this one stray up here uh, the rest of the pellets are in a 2 centimeter or 3 quarters of an inch group. Uh, overall I'd say the accuracy is perfectly acceptable with the open sights or the scope that comes with it but uh, when you mount a better scope the Remington Express is capable of very respectable accuracy for a spring gun in its price range. I'm now going to test the power by firing another 10 of those H&N Sport Barracuda match pellets over the chronograph. Here I have my chronograph test sheet and I've already done all of my calculations. With those 10.65 grain H&N Sport Barracuda match pellets I got an average velocity of 654.81 feet per second with a spread of just 13.5 feet per second. The highest being 661.7 feet per second and the lowest being 648.2 feet per second. Now using the average of 654.81 feet per second that gives me a power of 10.14 foot pounds. Now admittedly I thought that power was a bit low for this gun. Uh, these pellets though are a bit on the heavy side for 177s uh, but I use them as they're the best quality 177s I've currently got so I wanted them for the accuracy test but obviously there is a trade-off between weight and velocity. Uh, at the same time of filming this video though I've also filmed some shooting for another video with this rifle using much lighter pellets and with those I got a power of 11.56 foot pounds so that's just under the legal limit for England and Wales so I've got no concerns that this one is underpowered despite, uh, despite the test results for this video. So in its original unadulterated form the Express is supposed to achieve uh, up to 15 foot pounds or 1000 feet per second but as you can see from the sticker on the box uh, this one is down tuned to be uh, to the UK spec to make it legal here so only achieving up to 800 feet per second. So there you've seen the Remington Express air rifle now I think this is an absolutely excellent gun uh, it looks great it's got decent accuracy and power and in terms of quality it's irrelevant that it's made in China and um, that doesn't affect the quality at all although I guess it might have been nice had it been made in one of Remington's US manufacturing facilities.
Now to give you an idea of how highly I rate this gun, I recently downsized my air gun collection and I chose to keep the Express as my sole modern high power scoped rifle for things like pest control and pellet testing videos. I think the one downside to this gun for me are the sights, both in terms of the open sights and the scope that comes packaged with it. Um, I think I'd rather have foregone the package scope in favour of better quality open sights, especially as um, to get the most out of the gun you probably need to replace the scope anyway. Whilst I bought my rifle when it first came out so I didn't have any options with regard to stock or calibre, um, had I been given the choice I would have still picked this version anyway. In terms of price, its quality far exceeds its price tag. Um, I don't think this would look out of place with a £250 price tag, but as it is, the RRP is £159.95 for the regular models, up to £199.95 for the XP models, which come bundled with the few extra things like the integrated moderator. And second hand, you can pick up an Express for around £100. Um, one thing I will put a brief word of caution in at the end here is that um, because it comes bundled with a scope and it's got a relatively low price tag I expect this is probably quite an attractive proposition for um, a first gun but given its size and weight compa uh, combined with the fact that it takes quite a lot of force to cock and it doesn't have insignificant recoil it may be not ideally suited to a new shooter especially not a smaller or younger shooter. So thanks for watching, hope you've enjoyed the video, if so be sure to like, comment and subscribe to the Air Armoury and until next time, keep your arms in the air.